Hello folks. Time to discuss a little bit about producer and consumer surplus. And I've written those two phrases up on the board, consumer and producer surplus. And I've diagrammed here just a basic market and I've labeled it sort of just a market. A couple of definitions first. Consumer surplus first. Consumer surplus is defined as the additional utility that a consumer has derived as a result of paying a lower price at the market than he or she was prepared to pay. I was prepared to pay X up here, instead I paid Y, which was lower than I expected, and I have derived an additional bit of utility as a result of that purchase. I was going to get that much utility anyhow, but now I've got an additional bit. Why? Because I paid a lower price. That's consumer surplus. The additional utility that I've derived as a result of making a purchase at a, a, a lower price than I had anticipated on, on purchasing. Producer surplus. Producer surplus is a very closely related concept, but it's about costs. So a producer has come into the market with a certain amount of costs and then will be able to offer a price that is reflective of those costs. Instead, the producer gets a higher price than he or she had anticipated. And so experiences an added, I guess, uh, really an added uh, sense of profit, an added sense of uh, revenue as a result of fetching a higher price than he or she had anticipated at the market. Can we diagram those kinds of things, producer and consumer surplus, or are they merely definitional? Definitional. The answer is, is yes, we can diagram them. We can show you where it exists. And I want for you to imagine when we start to analyze now consumer surplus, that this demand curve that I've drawn here is just a whole bunch of individual consumers in the market. They've all come to the market, they've, they're, they've all come to purchase a good, and it, let's just take one. This particular consumer, let's just call him Bob. Bob has come to the market prepared to pay a pretty high price and this quantity of demand shows us that there, there are not a whole lot of people like Bob uh, at this relatively high price uh, there's there's not a lot of people like Bob that are willing and able to pay for whatever it is that we're paying for here but nonetheless Bob's here if Bob goes to the market and he's prepared to pay let's say P1 but he only has to pay P, then Bob has experienced an additional amount of utility, which is that kind of shaded in area or the outlined area that I just indicated. He's derived an extra bit of utility as a result of making that purchase. Didn't have to pay with P1, I only had to pay P. So that's, that's consumer surplus, and that's, uh, it can be demonstrated by this area above the price and below the demand curve. So I can shade in this entire area. All of that area represents consumer surplus. 
And all of these people up here on this high end of the demand curve would have gone to the market expecting to pay a higher price than ultimately they had to pay. They've experienced consumer surplus. They were probably able to find a deal and make an exchange. These people down here on this lower end of the demand curve, why were they not able to, to purchase? Well, it's because they were, they were only willing to be able to pay at prices below the equilibrium, and so they're less and less and less and less likely to find a, a seller. So it's likely that these folks down here on the demand curve, particularly these folks the way on the low end of the demand curve, came to the market and went to the market and came away empty-handed. So this is a zone of consumer surplus. Producer surplus is, is the same thing. I want you to imagine the supply curve just full of individual sellers. And we'll have somebody down here, let's say Floyd. Floyd's gone to the market bearing a certain amount of costs, and those costs allow Floyd to offer a price of P2 for his goods or services. Instead, he's found the market price of his goods and services is going for P, which is much, much higher than he had anticipated. So he's experiencing some surplus. He's experiencing an, probably some profit as a result of selling his good at a much higher price than he has anticipated. Uh, any seller that's on this lower end of the supply curve will experience consumer or producer surplus. And we can shade this area of producer surplus in, in this fashion. The sellers up here on this high end of the supply curve have probably gone to the market and they can only fetch a, a higher than equilibrium price and so they've probably not been able to find an exchange. I want you to note that surplus is maximized here at equilibrium. You've got this triangular shape at equilibrium, you've got a maximum number of producers that have experienced surplus and a maximum number of consumers that have uh, experienced surplus. If I offered a, a different price level, a price higher than equilibrium, I'm going to truncate or cut off some of that surplus that has, has been generated at market equilibrium and it's going to be someplace else instead. So if you have questions talking about maximizing consumer and producer surplus, that happens at equilibrium. It can only happen at equilibrium. It cannot happen at prices higher and it cannot happen at prices lower than equilibrium. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you soon.